In space, only the creepy spider crab facehugger things can hear you scream. While scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station, a group of young space colonists come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. So Alien Romulus comes from director Fede Alvarez, who has directed some other horrors and thrillers such as Don't Breathe and 2013's Evil Dead. Now he's taking on a franchise that can both be hallowed and despised, depending on the film. As newest iteration, it stars Kaylee Spaney, who we saw in Civil War, David Johnson, Archie Renault, Isabella Merced, Spike Fern, and Eileen Wu. And then it feels very much like a part of Ridley Scott's universe. I love how slow this story starts out. We meet Spaney's character, Rain, and her brother, Andy, who's played by Johnson. Now, by spending the first 10-ish minutes with them, we learned so much, and I quickly became enamored with their dynamic. It's crazy how just a few minutes of dedicated character time can create such a strong connection, which then has the lasting effects that's needed to carry us all the way through the film. Now, it's a bummer that other stories don't do this, because while the rest of the young cast in this still gets brief amounts of development time, and we can get connected to them, when the crap hits the fan, as we know it is going to, I am fully invested in Rain as the heroine because I know the depth of her character and how her heart works. And in this dynamic, both Spaney and Johnson, I thought they were wonderful. Now, I think Johnson showcases a little more range, but that's also how his character is written. And both deliver ferocity, strength, street smarts, cunning, even tragic emotion when it's called for. There are times, too, when we're supposed to feel conflicted about their actions. And thanks to how captivated I was with the characters, the emotions were easy to feel, and they naturally came about rather than being forced on me to just manipulate me into feeling one way or another about certain character actions. Now, the impetus for the story even happening is that we've got this group of people who have basically lived their entire lives on this mining planet. They want to leave. Well, they work, and they're pretty much owned by Wayland. So when they find an opportunity for a potential exit, they take it. Then the rest of the story is primarily just a fight for survival. The simplicity works, and it doesn't overcomplicate the pressure that's exerted on the characters and then on us as the audience. The progression from a slow start with character development into a discovery sort of arc to then finally landing on the ultimate survivor game show is a lot of fun, especially with how the anxiety and dread build. There is a decent portion of the story before we even encounter anything that goes bump in the dark. But scattered throughout, the storytelling is an uneven sense of timing. Now, I am all for ups and downs with suspense. You can keep a low level the entire way and then vacillate up and down to elicit the right amount of terror or discomfort. And this does maintain that underlying fear, but the gap between high-intensity action and quiet patience is pretty large. It made me feel the time of the movie. Now, again, don't mishear me on what I'm saying. I mean, I was on the edge of my seat for a bunch of this, and I was glued to the story. But when we'd go from such a drastic high make you hold your breath scenario to one that feels very commonplace, that massive difference in pacing put me on a bit of a teeter-totter. Now, when the tension is applied, it's immense. And the slow drama, I thought it was great too. I just wish there wasn't such a large divide between the emotional intensity of these two types of presentations. Now, for some of the things that I absolutely loved, first, there's Rain. I mean, she is extremely smart and a problem solver. She's always thinking outside the box and creating new solutions. Reminded me a lot of Ripley. She's thinking on her feet and coming up with options that just continued to captivate me. And they didn't feel out of the norm. I mean, it's not like all of a sudden she became some kind of superhero. She was a thinker. And she had the presence of mind to stop down for even the briefest of moments to create a new option, leading to some wonderful scenes. Now, the xenomorphs are jaw-droppingly cool. I mean, yeah, we have seen them before in all the films, but there's an element to a couple of them this time that just added a new punch to their visual aesthetics. The movements they display, even the texturing and the goo that drips out of their mouth, uh, is terrifying. I loved it. All right, so I have already seen two spider-themed horrors this year with the French film Vermines being just one of the most creepy crawling ones I've ever experienced. Well, Alvarez has effectively amped up the face huggers to make them supercharged in terms of just get me the F out of here. I mean, it feels like in a lot of the previous movies, the face huggers, they just kind of skittered around, mainly using their tails as propulsion and then primarily having their legs as a clamp onto the face. Here, mm, no. These, they act like demon possessed spiders that even the devil didn't want in hell, so he kicked them out. They are insanely fast moving. They race across the floors and walls, and they feel very much like a menacing presence. They are true reproductive hunters intent on finding their carriers. 
And if you saw the first trailer, you haven't seen anything yet. I mean, I loved the effects they used with these. The creatures, they showcase intent. I mean, they're not just mindless reproductive beings. Instead, though, they hunt and they stalk their prey in very similar ways, which we watch apex predators hunt. It made my skin crawl. Certain moments, it even had my butt puckered due to all the nervousness. And for as awesome as the xenomorphs and the facehuggers looked, there were a few times in the movie when the graphics and CGI on other things, they were less than great. In one instance, it did get better over time, but initially, it was rough. It still mildly worked, though, because the imagery we're seeing is only supposed to be lifelike. Now, another scene had some very mixed results with me. I was horrified by the presence, and then I adored the creativity, especially the practical effects. But portions of it looked way too computer-generated, and then it broke me out for brief moments. Now, luckily, the scenes were so tense that I didn't get pulled all the way out. And I could hop back into the suspense and anxiety pretty easily. And there are other effects, though, especially when we're watching the outside environments, whether that be debris floating in space or just the exterior of ships. It was so realistic and deep that I began to feel a bit of motion sickness. I mean, I was glued to the screen. So when the orientation twisted and it rotated, I did too. And it was almost too much in an awesome way. And the action in this, I it was a lot of fun. When it's happening, there are some very creative sequences employed that become immersive and exciting. Now, one in particular involves zero gravity, and it is both expertly delivered, but then so dynamically suspenseful that I was holding my breath and then doing small movements just in hopes that I could somehow help the character. It was absolutely a brilliant scene. Now, if I did want to nitpick on something, I can mention some illogical goofs that I noticed. I don't count these as negatives, just something that stood out to me as odd and not probable. Now, the ship that the group explores has been in zero gravity for at least a bit. When they enter certain areas though of the ship, we might see a beaker on a table filled with liquid and a stir, all upright, right in place. Now, I am no gravity expert, but I'm pretty sure things float all willy-nilly, especially liquids, when the gravity goes away. There's also a wet floor sign. I mean, it's perfectly upright and in place in a hallway. And again, I doubt it would just come to rest in that correct orientation. Now, obviously, these have zero impact on the story, but they stood out to me as silly, so now you get to notice them too. There are a couple of Easter eggs and nods to previous films, which I loved. I mean, now one is extremely overt and it's totally fan service. It was awesome. The others are very, very subtle, but still great that they were included. So for me, I mainly enjoyed this new entry into the Alien franchise. The character development, especially on our two lead protagonists, is deep and effective, creating personas we want to root for while also being conflicted about some of their decisions. The creature designs are spectacular, paying respect to the original designs while enhancing certain characteristics of others to make them more horrifying. And while not all of the CGI worked for me and the story pacing was uneven with noticeable dips, the narrative as a whole is nerve-wracking and anxious, delivering thrills and scares that make for an entertaining watch, regardless if you can hear anybody scream. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and then a ton of very creative and brutal violence. I give Alien Romulus four out of five couches. So which of the Alien films is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.